What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at the 2024 Nissan Sentra SV. This one does have the SV premium package finished in rosewood metallic and the MSRP is $27,500. So let's get right into this economy car with a nice premium touch. Underneath the hood of the 2024 Nissan Sentra, you're gonna find the naturally aspirated two liter inline four cylinder engine. This pumps out 149 horsepower with 146 pound feet of torque it's also paired to the Xtronic CVT for the transmission, and it is front wheel drive. Weighing in around 3,000 pounds with a 12.4 gallon fuel tank, you're also looking at 30 miles per gallon in the city with 40 out on the highway. The overall length is 182.9 inches with wheelbase at 106.6. Width is 71.5 and height is 56.9 inches. Moving on to the styling with the newest generation for the Nissan Sentra SV. It's a sporty looking economy car, especially in this color combo, gives it a luxury touch. You're gonna see some black for the housings of these headlights, a little bit of chrome trim throughout them, all leads into this gloss black front grille. Got your Nissan badge right in the center with black and white, and then quite a lot of mesh openings to allow some cooling to the little four cylinder. Got some chrome trim throughout that grille as well, and a nice trim piece on the far side, and then a little bit of a sporty design for that front splitter with more black trim down below that. It definitely looks like a Nissan overall, so they've kept the characteristics of the brand nicely, and for being a smaller economy car, it actually looks like it has some substantial size. You got some sharp body lines cutting into the front that fade towards the hood, so overall can't complain. It's definitely a good looking little car. At the side, you're gonna see the 17 inch wheels finish in a dual tone color, sharp body line surrounding that front fender, and then you can see some nice sharp lines in the lower portion of these doors. Got your body color door handles and mirror caps, and then a little bit of chrome and black trim surrounding these windows. Got a sunroof up on top, and then for the side profile, nice and proportional with a good profile overall. Sharp lines from that front fender, and then sharp lines for that rear fender. I also really like that trim piece cutting through this pillar that kind of separates the roof line and you can see how we have an integrated spoiler mounted onto the trunk lid. Got all your badging back here, and then parking sensors down below in the lower portion of the bumper. A little bit of plastic trim, and then some fins in the lower portion. Got your reflectors as well, and a nice set of taillights with the red accents. Design definitely comes together, so for an economy car, it's pretty sporty. Moving on to the key fob, we have a lock and unlock along with a remote start. If you go ahead and keep the car locked, you can just grab the door handle press the button and automatically unlock. Now with the SV Premium Package, you're gonna get this leather trimmed seat interior. Really nice looking, especially with the stitching. Along the door panel, you get some black soft touch material up on top, and then the tan color throughout this insert. We've got a brushed aluminum color on the release handle. All of your window and mirror controls with this plastic carbon fiber-like material, and then a lot of padding on the armrest with a good grab handle. Storage down below, Bose Audio, and then there are power controls up front. You're gonna see them, these leather trim seats with this really cool looking quilted leather pattern throughout all the stitching. You got the black and perforated throughout the bolsters. Really cool looking seats, nice black stripe. Definitely a sweet interior for an economy car. You got a flat bottom steering wheel as well with silver trim and then black leather wrapping it. Now sitting in the 2024 Nissan Sentra, keep my foot on the brake. We can go ahead and fire it up. For the center, you're gonna get a nice digital screen in the center along with the analog tack and speedometer. The screen in the center will show you some safety information and you can configure a little bit throughout the control panel on the left side. So if I go ahead and scroll left and right, you can see a few of these shortcuts down below going into all sorts of different settings within the car. Continuing over, we have some of the cruise control settings and safety information. And then we also have audio controls, different trip information, fuel economy, and then your home screen as well with digital speed readout and a blank setting. You're gonna see that Nissan badge in the center, all those controls on the left with some Bluetooth and audio. We have cruise control on the right side with the distance pacing. And then on the right stock, of course, you're gonna see windshield wiper controls, turn signals and headlights to the left. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have our eco mode, interior dimming, trip reset, trunk release, Nice little air vent with some of this brown color. Makes its way across the entire dash with the contrast stitching to it. Nice design, it is a rubber material, but it looks really cool, especially for this price point. And then Nissan's infotainment. This is basically what we've seen for quite a while. We have our menu icon in the center to get you right here. And then you can easily scroll left and right and see a few different items that'll pop up. 
shortcuts as well for audio, things like that. Camera system, you can have your backup camera along with a top-down view. So nice overall design, got a nice bit of information. Three air vents right in the center and then physical climate controls. We have the heated seats and steering wheel right in the center. Temperature on the left side for dual zone. You have the fan speed in the center, defrost, a few more controls, sink and AC. And then down below, you're gonna see quite a few different plugs along with our auto start stop, extra storage space, more cup holders in the center with this carbon fiber material. And then on your shifter, you have all your different gears and a low range. We have a little bit of storage right here, more of this tan color, and then open that up with a decent cubby down below. For the glove box, nice bucket as you would expect. And then one last look at the interior. Very surprising, this premium package does a lot. Definitely makes this car look pretty cool. Really nice contrast. You have a light color for the headliner along with a manual sunshade, that control, and then up here in front of the dome lights we have a sunglass holder. Garage door buttons are also underneath the thin mirror. Moving on to the rear seat space, I grab the door handle and open it up. Door panel is finished off very similar to the front with this nice tan color. You have that carbon fiber look material. And then in back, you do have a lot of the same stitching, the perforations, so really nice overall. Right in the center, we can pull this down and you're gonna get a nice armrest along with two cup holders. And then for amenities, we just have one single USB port and a little bit of storage in front of that passenger seat. We can also pop these and you're gonna fold down these seats nice and flat to give you extra cargo area and space into the trunk. So hopping into the back seat now with the Nissan Sentra at 5.11, this is pretty decent. You know, I have about an inch of headroom and with the driver's seat at my height even, I actually have really good legroom and knee room. So it's a roomy little car. The seats back here are pretty decently comfortable. You can tell it's on the small side in general, but nonetheless for the price point, for the size, it kind of makes some sense. We have dome lights up above, grab handles, and a decent amount of light led in here throughout all the windows. So not a bad setup for an economy car. Onto the trunk space, there's gonna be a button right underneath the Nissan badge. Pop that and manually lift it open. We have quite a lot of storage in here with a huge trunk area. Nice and low load floor as well. And you got a nice cubby on each side. With the seats manually folded down, you have a pretty large opening into the cabin to make this even more roomy. And then showing these again, they're gonna fold down nearly flat, giving you some space in front. And then that really large opening into the trunk. So setting off now in the Nissan Sentra. So first and foremost, it's not exactly a fast car, obviously with not that much power. However, I've been getting about 35 miles per gallon, just kind of cruising around town. I've done pretty good blend in the last uh, four or five days now of highway and city driving. And with that, I'm still not even at a half a tank. So it is very economical to drive. One thing that's quite nice, it doesn't feel like a cheap car. It feels like a pretty nice car. Hitting these tracks, the build quality feels pretty good. And again, this car starts around the $20,000 mark. So it is you know, a very inexpensive offering. However, the groundwork for the car itself, you know, you can tell it's built nice. You know, This is a car that can probably last a long time and do what you need to do. While it's not fast, I mean, it'll still get up to speed. You know, highway traffic, if you're really merging, you do kind of have to let the cars go. There's been a few times where I didn't want to pull out in front of a car just because it's not that fast. So that's just the one thing you might want to consider, but any kind of car in this category is probably going to be the same as far as power. As far as comfort, so I'm five foot 11. I think my legs are a little bit tall, I would say proportionally. So I think if you are close to six feet tall or have maybe longer legs, you might feel a little cramped. I have the seat really far back and I kinda wanna keep going farther back to get my legs straighter and more comfortable, but now the steering wheel is a lot farther away than it should be. Your palm should be able to rest on the top. So I'm like three inches too far back, but my legs are comfortable now. So I kind of have to drive my knees on the bent side to be at a good arm's length. So I think if you are on the tall side, this might be too small for you. My wife, she's like 5'3", fits perfectly, has no complaints. So that is one thing, once again, for a smaller economy car, depending on your height, you might need something bigger and more spacious. Maybe a Nissan Rogue, you know, they're not all too expensive and the crossover design gives you a little bit better space for your legs. Other than that though, it rides really smooth. The suspension absorbs bumps and it's pretty quiet. We're going 52. I mean, you don't even really hear the cars passing you. You don't really hear much wind noise or road noise, even going on the highway, going around 75 miles an hour. I mean, it's a very comfortable car to be in. 
The seats themselves are very padded and very comfortable. However, the base is very flat, so you can't really sink your butt down into it. I always feel like my butt's gonna slide forward in the seat. So once again, it doesn't have that higher level of comfort that you would see in maybe an Altima or of course more expensive cars. So they're comfortable enough. I mean, it's not bad. We've done quite a bit of driving in this. Interior ergonomics are incredibly easy. Everything's easy to use. Armrests are in a great place. I mean, it's, it's easy to drive. It's easy to just fit in here normal. The buttons are incredibly simple. Physical climate controls, old school system right here, really not all too up to date. Again, it gets the job done. You really can't complain. So not a bad car, you know, if you're looking for an economy car, but want something that has a cool touch to it, this is definitely above your typical economy car. Now you can get a basic Sentra with a kind of a basic cheap interior with cloth everywhere, or you can get, you know, this fully loaded one, which is pretty cool to look around and see the materials. So I like what Nissan has done with the Sentra in general. You can get a cheap car or a still cheap, but you know, a little bit more expensive than cheap and get something that's nicely equipped. So I think they have a good spectrum of cars across the price spectrum to really get what you want. And when you drive in this, while this is based on a very inexpensive car, it drives nice enough to where you don't have to feel like you're in a junky car. It's, it's quite nice in here and it is spacious overall. While the proportions might not be perfect for taller people, it is a spacious car with plenty of room, really good visibility, looking all around. I mean, there's honestly a lot of glass and really can't complain. Tons of safety features as well, just to make it your normal car up to date as far as safety standards go. So definitely something to take into consideration if you're on a budget and want something that is economical and pretty useful. So now my honest thoughts with the Sentra. Pedal to the floor. Fifty-five. So of course for me, used to very fast cars. Um, this takes some getting used to being in something on this level of performance that doesn't have performance, but of course you're not buying this car for that. You just have to if you are used to more adequately powered, even kind of normal powered cars like even a V6 Camry or a you know, V6 Ultima or something like that. You have to get used to, you can't pull out in front of every car because you might not make it. So that's one thing with a car at this level, of course the power is not quite there. But that does translate to really good efficiency. Even with me trying to floor it, doing whatever, you know, I'm getting a really good gas mileage. I still have 262 miles of range and we are significantly above a half a tank. So it's an economical car. If you are looking for a daily driver, something that you're just gonna be racking out miles on, you don't want an expensive car to buy, you don't want an expensive car to own, I mean, this is definitely something to get. And when you do spec it to the SV with the SV Premium package, you get a nice interior, something that feels a little bit above and beyond. You don't normally get this kind of interior, honestly, in a smaller economy car. This does have real leather on parts of the seats, and you can tell the quality's there. It feels a lot nicer when you look around, you forget you're in a more basic type of car. So I like how Nissan has done that, and of course with the spectrum of the Sentra in general, I mean, you really can get one that'll fit your needs really well. And I think what I like about this car is that it does ride really good. There's been other cars at this level that are just really cheap and cars you don't want to own. This you can drive on the highway, drive around town, it's comfortable, it's quiet, you know, it doesn't feel like a tin can. So the quality I feel like is really there in this to where you can get something that's kind of nice at the end of the day. I'd say my biggest complaint, of course, just given my height, I feel way too tall in here. I really constantly fighting with putting the seat too far back, but then can't reach the steering wheel pretty much. So just my proportions, I'm not the person that would be buying this car. But I think if you're under six feet, you probably won't have an issue generally if you're on the shorter side. Uh, this would be a pretty good way to go. And then given it has practical rear seats in the large trunk, it can be very useful. So it's nice to see the size. They really maximize the size in a small footprint of a car. So it's not really many complaints for what this car is. Obviously, if you are familiar with our channel, we're used to performance cars. That is kind of our specialty. Performance cars with power, the fun to drive aspects. <laughs> I am flooring it up this hill. We are not moving. <laughs> wow, that's funny. Uh, so obviously this car isn't exactly what we are used to driving and owning what we really are passionate about but I can see this being you know, a good first car or something, especially a good used one, probably 10 grand or so. So I think the new Sentra in general has a good offering for first time buyers, people looking for just a simple commuter car. This kind of ticks all those boxes and gives you a nice place to be, good safety features, good technology, honestly. Even though the screen looks a little dated, 
um, gives you everything you need. So it's a good, well-packaged car with what you need and just doesn't really have the extra stuff that you may not want to pay for. So good way to go on a budget. I think this is one of the better budget cars out there given it feels nice and doesn't feel cheap to drive. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and stay tuned for plenty more content, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.